Hey guys, uh, welcome to Dora Hacks uh, live streaming session again. Um, today we have two amazing products, projects uh, from the Solana Hackathon um, that that is here to present our projects to you guys. Uh, uh, two amazing projects, Apricot Finance. Uh, a leading lending protocol on Solana and Radius, uh, interesting middleware uh, team, uh, introducing the projects to you guys. So as you can see on my screen right now, we have approximately 88 projects participating in the uh, hackathon in our China track and uh, you know, general Asia track. We do welcome global um, hackers uh, to participate in our event um, that uh, you can see those are, are all registered on chain. So if you go to hackerlink.io slash grant, uh, you can find this grant, uh, all the information here. Yeah, so um, so uh, my, my intro here is that we really want to uh, call upon those who are actively building on Solana technology, uh, Solana tech stacks. If you haven't participated in this hackathon yet, feel free to uh, intro. Um, feel free to uh, upload your project, submit your project to the Solana hackathon on Hackerlink. And we are here to help you present uh, to the general developer community and to the general investor community. Yeah, so uh, uh, without further ado, I want to um, give Yanif, uh, the, the founding team member of Apricot, uh, a chance uh, to intro um, his project to you guys uh, before he starts. Uh, I'll briefly introduce Apricot to you guys. Apricot is actually uh, coming from Dora Hacks Hackathon in Austin. Uh, where one of the founders, Cecilia, flew in from New York. So we get to know Apricot pretty early, actually. And to let you guys have a, a better understanding of, what, of uh, who they are, uh, Apricot aspires to be the go-to platform for decentralized financial solutions in a thriving Solana ecosystem. From my understanding, they try to become the next compound, compound or Aave uh, on Solana, and from my understanding, they they should be one of the first teams uh, to be uh, to be ready to deploy on Solana mainnet in no time. I think they're waiting for uh, some Oracle solutions to be ready to launch their products. Um, so very excited about their progress. They have some of amazing investors, and uh, but for you guys, I really want you to understand what who they are, what they are building, uh, how strong is their tech stack, et cetera, et cetera. So I have Yanif today with us to better introduce Apricot to you guys. Yeah, feel free to start anytime here. Yeah. All right, thanks, Steph. So um, I guess, uh, so we are Apricot Finance here and we're building a new lending protocol on Solana. So uh, today our presentation will cover a few parts. First, we'll walk through the slides to help you understand what we're building. And after that, we'll give you a live demo of our uh, current product. Uh, but to get started, I'll, uh, I'll first give a brief intro of my team. So me, I'm uh, Yanif, I'm the technical lead at, at Apricot. So before joining Apricot, I was a core developer at one of the world's largest uh, high frequency trading firms where I was building uh, low latency trading infrastructure and maintaining connectivity to lots of exchanges. So my background is mostly in uh, low level development. And then our co-founders, uh, we have uh, CC Ace and Dr. Go. CC, uh, she was previously an investment banker and now she works at a uh, 50 billion uh, fund where he does a uh, special asset management and we have ace who is uh, more of a veteran in the in the crypto space and he previously co-founded uh, a trading platform uh and we have dr go who is a uh, phd in econs and finance who is designing our financial uh, products so without further ado let's uh, jump into our slides so Apricot provides a full suite of 
DeFi services. And we're going to start off as uh, a very simple lending protocol and later on add more services that are centered around lending. And the reason we choose Solana is that Solana's speed advantage really solves some of the traditional pain points very common on lending protocols, such as a uh, very high minimum collateral ratio and a very expensive uh, liquidation penalty. So on this page, we can see how Africa compares uh, in terms of borrowing terms to some of the traditional platforms. So we can see that uh, in terms of minimal capital ratio and the liquidation threshold, we're lower compared to traditional platforms by about 10 to 20 percent. Now, the reason we're able to do this um, is that thanks to Solana's speed of one thing, we're able to uh, perform more liquidation within a shorter period of time. So that means we don't need to start uh, liquidation in a defensive or preemptive manner, like how it is done on traditional platforms. In, uh, instead, we can start liquidation only when it actually has to be done. So um, now on traditional platforms, when accounts get liquidated, external uh, liquidators take part in this process and take about 5 to 15 percent liquidation penalty from the user as a discount for the external liquidators. Now you can see that on every card, that, that liquidation penalty is only 1%. And similarly, uh, it's because Solana is a lot faster. So external liquidators face a lot lower cost uh, during liquidation and lower liquidation risk as well. So overall, they need lower uh, incentive. Now, another significant difference that every card has is that um, let's say when a large scale liquidation takes place. It's, it's quite common on traditional platforms to have accounts that need to be liquidated, liquidated, but uh, remain in the liquidation or, or incomplete state after a significant period of time. That means that they can't get liquidated soon enough. In order to solve this problem, we are specifically providing a two hour liquidation mechanism to our liquidation guarantee mechanism here to make sure that um, underwater accounts on our platform can get processed in time and that everybody stays protected. Um, so here, what we're showing is some of the uh, primary workflows that take place on every card land. So on the left hand side, you have the simple things that you should can do, deposit, withdraw, borrow, repay, that's easy. So on the right hand side, we have this liquidation process. Uh, we have three steps. Uh, I'll just walk, walk, walk through them one by one. So first of all, every call assist. What every call assist is, is basically the user can configure a self liquidation level. Let's say, uh, when his collateral ratio reaches 112%. So, so this, uh, liquid, this every call assist is constantly monitoring uh, a the, the the user's collateral ratio, and if it and if his collateral ratio reaches that pre-configured hundred and twelve percent, this the, this off-chain worker, this Avicol assister, is going to send off a trigger to the contract to perform self-liquidation, so that the contract is going to take part of the user's collateral and liquidate it on Serum in accordance with user's uh, configuration. Uh, let's say uh, this, the next thing uh, in the case that uh, either the user did not configure every call assist, or let's say uh, every call assist somehow isn't able to complete the self liquidation in time, then the user's collateral ratio could continue falling to let's say 110 percent. That's when external liquidators can participate in this liquidation process, just like how it works on Compound. Um, now, during some extreme market situations. It could be that uh, there's not uh, enough liquidity on the market and maybe the, the market just crashed and then the li external liquidators are running away out of market fear. So in that case, maybe the user's collateral ratio could continue falling to 103% or the liquidation process for the user's account could remain incomplete after two hours. In that case, in any of these two cases, every call rescue uh, is going to immediately step in and complete this liquidation process. So, so when that happens, Africa Re Rescue basically acts as an external liquidator. It takes over users uh, collateral and it can sell 
uses a collateral on serum dex, of course. But uh, we have to note one thing here is that uh, I recall rescue steps in only when there's um, extreme market situation. So immediately setting off the user's collateral might actually lead to a loss. So another thing we can do is that we can take a long-term view uh, on the value of the assets that's being uh, liquidated and maybe collect that collateral into a pool, a, a mix of uh, collateral assets. Here we call it the card pool. So how the card pool works is that it works in a way that's kind of similar to ETFs. So every time Africa Rescue steps in and collects some of the uh, collaterals from a user and deposits that uh, collateral into this card pool, which contains a mix of different collateral assets collected through Africa Rescue. Every time we do that, we're going to mint a corresponding amount of new card tokens. These new card tokens can then later go on sale and be purchased by external card investors. So card investors have to hold these card tokens for uh, a certain period of time, let's say one month or maybe a few weeks. After that holding period, card investors have the freedom to redeem their card tokens with every card. Uh, like, like we said, the, the card works kind of like an ETF. So every card, every unit of card corresponds to a certain percentage of assets within the card pool. So the price of every unit of card is just the total asset value within the, the card pool divided by the number of uh, card tokens that we have issued. And basically we're going to compose a card index that helps uh, investors to track the, pro the price of every unit of card token. Um, so the reason that we're creating such a card mechanism is that we want to, first of all, create a uh, greater consistency and the predictability to this liquidation process, which so far has been uh, surprisingly lacking on most of the major platforms. And Another reason is that we are at the same time creating a channel of investment uh, for this kind of uh, special asset, and then we're making it available to, to everyday uh, investors. So every time uh, new tokens, new assets get added into the card pool, we are obtaining it. We're obtaining those collaterals at 1% discount, just like an external uh, liquidator would. So when investors purchase that card token, we're actually passing along that 1% discount uh, to card investors. And uh, another thing I'd like to note that um, even though we, we, we technically think of the card pool as, uh, as a pool of liquidated assets, all of the, all of the tokens within the card pool are, are actually um, high market cap tokens such as uh, ETH, BTC, Solana, USDC, uh, USDT. So these assets are very strong, ca carry very strong long-term value. And uh, one thing we can do is that during truly extreme market situations where we run out of reserve fund, of course, this situation is highly unlikely. Um, but when it does happen, we could use card token as a last resort to compensate lenders and to maintain our platform stability. So um, another thing I'd like to mention is that in the future, as our platform continues to grow, there are a lot of ways uh, we can uh, play around with this card mechanism. For example, the, the very least we can do is that we can put assets um, in the card pool for, for staking. And as, as we continue to grow and start accepting um, assets uh, that have lower market lower market cap and therefore higher risk. We might even do, do tranching with card. For example, we have uh, card tier one where we only accept uh, tokens with really large uh, market cap and then card, card tier two where was, we, was, we accept some of the tokens with maybe a longer tail, maybe smaller uh, market caps. So, so, so as to categorize it into different profiles of risk. And in the future, we might even turn cards into an independent uh, mechanism that specializes in bad debt processing. And we could even use this card mechanism to do bad debt processing for other lending protocols. Um, so that's an overview of the uh, card token. And of course, in the end, the card token also comes with a higher uh, 
voting weight is compared to a compared to our main token APR, which which I'm going to talk about in a bit. So overall, we're trying to build a lending protocol that benefits all stakeholders. So for borrowers, we have uh, we we allow them to borrow more with less collateral, and at the same time have a significant level of control over their liquidation risk. And for lenders, of course, uh, first they're they're protected by this uh, inherent uh, uh, over collateralization. And next, we have what we call rescue, which uh, steps in to make make sure that uh, everyone is protected and, and that liquid liquidation can be performed in time. Um. So, so uh, next, let's talk about our roadmap. Um, so basically, later in the demo, you're going to see a significant part of this. We have Apricot Lend, we have Apricot Assist, which is the self liquidation mechanism that I've been talking about, and then we have Apricot Rescue. So, so all of these are going to uh, go on mainnet in probably the next few weeks. Um, so. All that is pending right now is uh, uh, we're waiting for our oracles to come online. Uh, we have already integrated with uh, with Pith Network. We have integrated with the, uh, Swissboard. We're going to see which, which one of them uh, goes online first. Um, and then we we're also in the process of auditing, which should be complete in in probably uh, two weeks, two, two or three weeks. So so we're very close to having a mainnet launch, and. and this part here are basically available other than this, uh, this card mechanism. The card mechanism here, uh, is probably going, going to launch, uh, going to be launched a bit later down the road. So, um, when we launch, we're, we're also going to, uh, provide users with a, with what we call a, a set of, uh, fintech module, which is basically a set of template based transactions that help users to perform a series of, uh, Actions, a chain of actions within a single transaction. It can be used for things such as market arbitrage, uh, margin trading, uh, flash loan based liquidation, and more. And we're going to talk about demo that in a bit. Uh, so fixed rate loan is basically, uh, uh, it's basically for users who, pr who, who prefer predictable yields. We can, we plan to, to bring that up in, in Q3. And there's also, uh, low to no collateral loan. Uh, where we're going to allow users on our platform with a uh, high stake and the uh, perfect credibility uh, to borrow with less collateral, to, with under collateralization. So for lenders, that comes with a higher risk, but also, but also a higher interest rate as well. Yeah, so 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 this margin trade example here, basically, uh, we're, 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 we're going to skip this part because later we're just going to uh, give you a live demo of this. And... and uh, this is another template, a transaction template, uh, where basically uh, external liquidators could use a flash loan to, to complete a uh, liquidation process so, so that he doesn't have to. Um, so, so usually to complete this uh, liquidation, external liquidator would need to come in with a certain amount of, uh, 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 certain amount of assets first. So in this case, you can come in empty handed. Use a flash loan to complete, complete this, uh, liquidation process and immediately, immediately walk away with a certain amount of profit. Uh, so, so basically these are just two of the, so some of the transaction templates we're, we're, we're thinking about in the future. We're going to keep adding more so that, um, users on, on our platform can have a one click access to some of the very interesting, uh, transactions that they can do in the DeFi space. Um, so here, uh, we have our tokens. We have our APR and COF, uh, just in case you, uh, you don't notice. So it's every COF, uh, just, just with an I in the middle. So APR is our, 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 is the main token that we're going to, uh, launch on, on various exchanges. And COF is the token, is the special token that is dedicated to bad debt, bad debt management. Um, so with that, that's about the, uh, slides that we have to cover. So next, I'd like to jump over to a live demo. Uh, so here you can see that, uh, so here's the interface uh, of our app. So here you can see a list of assets that uh, that are supported, BDC, ETH, USDT, USDC, and Solana. Uh, so so sorry, I don't, I think you, you are not sharing the right screen. 
Yeah, we are still seeing the slides. Sorry oh, to interrupt. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, Steve, are, are you are you seeing the app? Uh, no, I'm seeing the 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 the, the slides. Um, so maybe try, you know. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll stop, stop and restart. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. This okay. Be, okay. This should be the demo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so so here we're seeing on, on the left hand side we have the our, our web app. We have the dashboard. We have the markets where you can look at uh, uh, the deposit interest rate, the total amount of deposit, the borrow interest rate, and the total amount of borrow. So this is uh, just a uh, an app that, that we're putting on on DevNet. So uh, the data are pretty much uh, made up using using fake tokens. Um, so, he, so, so so now let's look at our dashboard here. Uh, so dashboard here shows uh, what's my current current amount of deposit, what's the current amount that I've borrowed, and how much asset I have in my wallet. So uh, to get started, let's just uh, deposit some asset. Let's deposit one ETH, and I'm going to confirm on my wallet. Okay, so it shows that uh, I've made a deposit of one ETH. So it shows here you can see that um, that's the total value of the assets that I have deposited. And that's the, here's the total value of assets that I've borrowed. So let's try to borrow something. Borrow 10 USDT. Proof. So you should be able to see as well that uh, the 10 USDT borrow has showed up. Uh, now, of course, I could repay this as well to clear that debt. Okay, so I just finished repaying my uh, ten dollar of uh, USDT. So, so that's basically the uh, uh, deposit, withdraw, borrow, and repay that that's, that everybody is probably familiar with. So next, uh, I'd like to show you how you can uh, perform margin trading uh, uh, using using our platform. Uh, so here you can see there's a swap tab here. So what it allows you to do is basically uh, borrow a certain amount of fund and then immediately swap it to another asset. So here we can borrow, say, uh, 1000 USD and immediately swap it to uh, 0.25 BTC. Oh, so let's do that. Hmm. My apologies, let, let me refresh this page. Yes, yeah, sometimes there's a there's a bit of delay. So um, let's see if it goes through this time. Hmm. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. I, I'm not sure. There, 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 there's a this feature is pretty new here. So there's probably some some technical hiccup here. Um, Yaniv, is it because you don't have enough like USDT? You are saying one thousand. You are putting actually a hundred, a hundred. I mean, ten thousand there. Um, can you try lowering the amount um, of USDT? Probably, but just just give it a try. No. Uh, it, it's probably I, I've done something that I should not. Uh, just just now I, I made a change to our to our backend code and probably just broke the interface. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, Anyway, we're, we're going to fix this in a bit and, uh, and when, when we launch this, everything is going to be working. So the idea is that, uh, you can, um, the, the, the idea is that you can, uh, uh, borrow here, uh, with, uh, with, let's say, uh, four times to eight times leverage and immediately swap it to a, 
to, 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 to another asset. And, and similarly, you could, uh, that, that's for opening position and you can close the position just by uh, reversing, just by reversing the direction of the trade. Um, okay, I, I guess th this part is, we're, we're stuck here, but, but we're going to, to show you the next part, uh, which is self-liquidation. So basically, um, uh, usually on our platform, users can borrow assets at a collateral ratio of uh, 120%. But let's say if the user wants, um, understands the risk and he, he wants to borrow with, with a higher leverage, let's say reach a, a collateral ratio of 110%, what he can do is that he can enable uh, this apricot assist here. So if we enable apricot assist, uh, according to this configuration here, what it means is that um, once user's collateral ratio falls to 111%, uh, we have an assist bot, which is running in the, in the back end and it's going to be watching uh, over user's collateral ratio. And it's uh, going to, uh, once this collateral ratio reaches 111%, it's going to help the user perform a self-liquidation self search to raise his collateral ratio back up to 115%. So let's, uh, let's try that. Approve. So now let's try to borrow as much as we can. And later uh, we're going to manipulate the price to so as to intentionally trigger a liquidation. So now we have a deposit value of uh, 2.5K. Let's borrow some uh, BTC. Uh, yeah, maybe let's deposit some more. Ah, we don't have we we don't have enough we don't have enough USDT here. Uh, damn it. Let me try if I can fix this in a bit. Um, okay, sorry for that. So that was an embarrassment. We're going to make sure that when this thing comes online, it's going to be ready. But what I've just done, is that I have borrowed close to uh, 10,000 USDT and I have swapped that to about 0 0.25 BTC. So the prices you're seeing here, they are actually our uh, internal price. We're not connected to our Oracle at the moment, specifically for this demo, because we want to uh, later manipulate the price and uh, create an artificial scenario where we can do liquidation. So, so here in this case, you can see that um, I've already uh, just now using the swap feature, I've borrowed about 10,000 USDT and I have uh, purchased swap it to uh, 0 0.25 uh, BTC. I'm going to do it again, just so that I can reach the very limit of our uh, borrow, borrowing power. I'm going to borrow another 10,000 and uh, swap. Okay, so, so here you can see that I've reached 98% of my borrow limit and here's, uh, uh, here, so, so here I've borrowed 20K USDT and I have uh, about uh, 0.5 BTC in my deposits. Um, so we're, we're dangerously close to, to liquidation right now. So you can see that our cut ratio is probably uh, 112%. Now, in order to demonstrate liquidation, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to artificially lower the price of BTC. Uh, th th this is a fake BTC that we're using here, so, so and it's connected to our own feed, so we're able to uh, lower the price here. 
after I lower the price, um, our collateral ratio should reach 111%. And once it reaches 111%, our liquidation bot here, which is running, is going to help the user perform a self-liquidation. And then you're going to see another trade here. And uh, after that, the user's total supply and uh, total borrow should decrease by about the same amount. So right now, the price of BTC is... Uh, is 40k let's lower it to 39 uh 39,500 okay so right now the user's collateral ratio has reached uh 111 percent so we should we should see this uh uh liquidation uh going through pretty soon let's just wait a few more seconds all right, it's been fired. So just now, what we were seeing is that uh, initially we had about 0 0.5 uh, BTC in our deposit and uh, 20,000 um, 20, in, in, in our borrow here. So now, uh, because the, the self-liquidation bot has, 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 has triggered a self-liquidation, so we made a sale of... 0 0.1287 BTC at a price of 40,000. So, uh, so our BTC deposit has been reduced and our USDT borrow has been reduced. And overall, our collateral ratio has been reduced to 115%, just like our previous, we previously configured. Right. So, so, so in this demo, I've shown you three parts. I've shown you, uh, you can, how you can deposit, you can, uh, borrow, you can repay and you can use swap to perform, uh, uh, kind of simplified margin trading. Probably we call it a margin swap. And then we have this, uh, uh, record assist mechanism, which can help the user, uh, perform liquidation when he's aware of the risk involved. So let's just complete this by closing our positions here. So here I have 0 0.371 BTC. I like to go short on that. 0 0.371, I like to swap it back to USDT. Oops, okay, swap. Okay, so you can see that my BTC position is mostly cleared and my USDT borrow position also has been cleared. Right, so that's about uh, our live demo. Um, so basically, uh, we're at a point, uh, so, so all of this has been developed for probably over the past one month. And right now, in order to go on mainnet, we are we're waiting for Oracle and we are waiting for auditing to complete. And meanwhile, we're building a lot of uh, partnerships, uh, for, uh, uh, we, 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 we with other, uh, de DeFi protocols and, and we're providing our yield, yield generating service to them, to, to various, uh, uh, aggregators and to some betting platforms. And we look forward to, um, uh, building more pla uh, partnerships and integrate further with the uh, Solana ecosystem and to continue contributing to our Solana community. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, uh, that's very detailed uh, uh, introduction. It's actually the first time I, 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 I see the real demo of Apricot. Um, yeah, uh, so far it looks great. Uh, I, I think it looks familiar. The user interface looks familiar with some of the uh, largest DeFi protocols. Uh, on Ethereum, but yeah, like it, it looks great. It looks great. Um, yeah, uh, I do have a few questions, but I think time is uh, limited today. Um, so um, I'll, I'll pass on uh, the, the the mic to Aridius team first. Um, and uh, if we still have time at the end, I think we can ask some questions. But in general, it looks great. But thanks, Yaniv and Cecilia, for the amazing presentation. Yeah. All right, thank you, Steve. Yeah. Um, thank you.